गुड आफ्टरनून और गुड मॉर्निंग माई डियर व्यूअर Look at these lumbering beasts the product of so called evolution the same evolution that has landed those poor ducklings on the side of an ice float or some damned thing now you're going to tell me this is all an accident right good morning good morning it's not, it's not possible how can we have such beauty and such harmony and such such beneficence in nature at large and then at the same time say well the whole thing is a big accident doesn't make to say doesn't mean to make any sense doesn't seem to make any sense my dear viewer good morning my name is hussein some people think i'm slightly insane this is the road less traveled so i had basically come i'd come to the conclusion that i wasn't going to make any more movies at least about the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jalla necessary being because i keep repeating the same things again and again and again things for which there are no answers first of all all of science is cause and effect all this means is that we are studying a so called natural phenomena let's say and um what we do is we isolate it and we try and figure out what causes what what causes it to change and and so forth like so for instance if we see that there are kids getting sick in a certain part of town then what we'll do is we'll try and figure out what's causing that that's all of science cause and effect everything was caused by something else and it all goes back to the beginning the beginning which would ostensibly be the creation of the universe however when you extrapolate that logic further what it means is that something caused the universe to being according according to science the universe could not have just popped into being by itself so according to science there are two explanations either the universe has been around forever and people are going to work on the go train on the blue yonder go train which you can't see unfortunately you can kind of glimpse not really yeah unfortunately that's one site that will have to be left for these sore eyes my dear viewer so basically it's like this bench in the middle of nowhere there's a reason that it's facing outwards there is a reason that it's here the reason is that there's a waterfall right here the bench didn't just land up there by uh, automatically same way when we look around we see everything we see that thing in the sky that's a moon there's a reason that it's up there there's a reason that it's built the way it is that it's the same the size it is that it's moving in the way it is and that you know it affects natural tides and what not during the summer time by the way dear viewer this is a beautiful lake spawning or salmon spawning kind of festivities going here like in october november we came round here and i have this uh, movie of us cleaning a salmon which is literally as big as my arm unbelievable But yeah, I mean the reason this bench is here is so that people can sit here and uh basically wonder about what they're going to do with the rest of their day. Anyhow, I have two security interviews, so don't worry about me, my dear viewer, and I have plenty of calls to make on side projects. So I'm always pretty busy. I've got plenty of websites to update at a given point of time, plenty of books to read and to write, plenty of movies to watch, and plenty of YouTube channels to take notes on. So, first of all, science is all cause and effect and there had to be an uncaused cause. That's the part that's that's pretty problematic. Science says that either the universe has existed forever, which is illogical, or that something caused it. But then the question becomes if God created everything, who created God? And so on and so forth, and this is called an infinite regression, this argument. but there had to be an uncreated creator is all it boils down to unless you want to say that something created something forever which is absolutely ludicrous i've said it before and it's worth saying again dear viewer that the very fact of our existence is a miracle right something must have caused something and that something was not caused by something else that's what it boils down to it had to be the case anyhow second thing is so first of all 
Where did everything come from? The second thing is, yes, why is it so beautiful, right? So basically, atheists say, well, there's no such thing as design. Like to say the tree is designed, it just appears designed because when you say designed, it brings into mind that there must be a, someone who designed it. On the other hand, if you say the tree is the result of ever increasing uh, complexity brought about by iterations in kind of a genetic transcendence, if you will, going over the per going over a period of millions of years. What I mean by it is that the tree started off as something simple back millions of years ago, and over time it has developed into this beautiful tree for, on an individual basis and on a spatial basis. That, and that's to do with species. In any case, it's been six minutes. I'm blabbing away. No one watches these damn things anyway. Anyhow, so number one, where did everything come from? Number two, how is it so amazing? Okay, so you may not like the word design, but you have to admit that everything is ordered, right? And if everything is ordered, the question becomes, how is it ordered? How is it possible that something that's an accident, as in this universe, has coalesced into order? You've got galaxies, you've got 200 million galaxies, and then each of them has 200 million solar systems, 200 billion, and each of them has 200 billion star systems. So basically, you've got countless galaxies and stars and, and, and orbiting objects all of which are moving. Galaxies are moving. Whole galaxies are moving. Everything is moving in the universe. Galaxies pass within each other, right? And you're going to tell me that this is just happening and there's, there's nothing to be said about it, right? Third thing is this. It's nice that things are... Oh, there's the go train, you lucky wankers. You get to see it after all. And I'll stop to give you a steady shot and I'll give you a bit of perspective with the building. There we go. Anyhow, it's probably time that we got off to work. I was so rude to that lady over there. I was ignoring her. We were doing the ego thing where I was pretending I'm better than her and she's pretending she's better than me. And because she's better than me, she gave me a beautiful hello. And I just shrugged and ignored her because I was making a movie for you, my dear viewer. All right, so the first question is, where did everything come from? Third question is, like, you may not like the word design, but this is definitely order. What we see in the universe is order. How did that come about? It's based on laws, right? So the laws were there first, and then the universe was created, which conform to those laws or does it make more sense to say the universe created itself and created its own laws and decided to do whatever it felt like doing does that make sense or does it make sense to say the universe has been around forever none of that makes sense to me you see the only thing that makes sense is that there is a god it's obvious it seems so obvious people say the bad things of religion what i think is that people have had I think personally that a lot of atheists, in fact, all atheists, I think personally, start off being, you know, in touch with intuition, in touch with our innate human goodness. That's all God is. Our innate human goodness, might, you might call that God. The feeling of, I should be nice. I should be honest. I should do something with my life. I shouldn't be lazy, right? I should respect others. I should be compassionate. All of these things are God, because according to Richard Dawkins, who wrote The Selfish Gene, you know, we're not only selfish as humans and individuals, our actual genetic makeup is selfish. The gene seeks to propagate itself. And things like being kind to others just doesn't crack it in the real world. Animals are not kind to each other. Not really. Like they sometimes help each other out of necessity in a herd mentality kind of way. Because if one of them gets hurt and others can help it, then when, you know, those others are hurt, they will be helped as well. That's a rational model. That's not a compassionate model. There's no place for compassion in a selfish world. Do you understand? 
especially from a genetic perspective. If our genes are trying to propagate themselves, then is it to say that we're pretending to be nice just so that our genes will propagate themselves? In any case, it's a, it's a nice long discussion. It's totally not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is, first of all, where did everything come from? Second of all, why is it ordered? Why do you have day and night? Why is everything gel so amazingly and fits so perfectly uh, in order to accommodate us and our existence? You might say, well, we're a product of the environment. The environment was there and we evolved to uh, adapt to it. Let me ask you this question then. What about the rest of the animals and species and creatures? How is it that man is so preeminent over other animals? Wow, you lucky schmuckers. There comes another go train. You might have noticed it wasn't a go train in any case. So, the last thing is this. That who manages all of this? Who manages all of this? So I'll end with a beautiful uh, story. Um, there was a, a lady during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. The moral of the story is that every person needs to have proofs for the existence of God. So there's an old lady sitting there spinning a spinning wheel on the side of the road or in some shade or something. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, who never fought and who always preached you know, be good to people and be kind and all those things. He never, he never basically said, go out and kill people. I'll just be honest with you. You might as well know this. Anyhow, he asked the lady, he stopped his companions and he said, so, do, so lady, every person needs to have a proof for the existence of God. And she said, yes, that's, that's, that's certainly the case. And I've understood that this is what needs to be. And he said, well, lady, can you tell me what your proof is? Look at that nest in there. You're going to tell me that's just an accident, right? This little speck of a planet in the middle of nowhere, like which shouldn't even exist. And all of these amazing things are going on and it's a pure coincidence, right? Well, you can believe in coincidences. I choose to believe in something else, something more magical. Anyhow, you'll be like, oh, well, you just make things up. It's not made up. What if there is a God, right? And what if it's all true? And it is true, by the way. You know, like the only thing that is inexplicable is he himself. Everything else can be explained. And it's not just explaining things through him. We don't look at the tree and say, well, it grew that way because God made it grow that way. No, there's different forces. Our imams have talked about these things, peace be upon them all. In any case, the lady said, well, you know what? When I'm spinning my wheel and it's going round and round and round, I'm spinning my wheel. Then... If I stop spinning my wheel, then it basically stops spinning. Obviously, if this little spinning wheel can't function and perform without me spinning it, how's this amazing universe with the suns and the stars and the planets and the skies and all this going to function, you know, without someone taking care of all of that business? It's the same thing that... Um, Prophet Noah was told in a story or was it Prophet Moses peace be upon them all so peace be upon all the prophets says the Quran Salamun al-Mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen in any case so one of the prophets asked God how is it that you take that you don't sleep how is it possible you don't sleep so God told them to make a beautiful pot and uh out of clay and he painted it and everything or maybe he just took a clay pot and he basically sat there meditating with the clay pot on his lap and obviously at a certain point in time he couldn't hold his pose any longer and what he ended up doing was turning the focus onto the upcoming bystanders <laughs> <laughs>